So Alex, tell me about Edgy and what problems it's solving. Absolutely. So if you are a, a CDO or a CPO in a company and you own a website and you want to make decisions based on the data that you collect, based on what, how people use it or how people use your product or your e-commerce or whatever you do on the website, chances are that you are missing up to 50% of the data. So chances are your decision, the decisions you're making uh, could be biased or wrong. And that's a problem if you are uh, owning the data pipeline in your company. Why would you be missing 50% of the data? That's a great question. Uh, there is no single factor, although there is a single cause that we can pinpoint. But let me, let me tell you about the high level causes. So first of all, ad blockers. Ah. They quadrupled in the last 10 years, the adoption of ad blockers globally. Second is the privacy regulations, which is great but they created you know, habits and technology barriers in the sense that between 20 and 30% of users only accept the cookie banner on the average website. And that's another two thirds of the data you, you cannot collect. Um, and then you have you know, mobile adoption and you know, technical frameworks dropping, uh, support for legacy browsers. There are a lot of uh, different you know, disparate causes that when you put all of that together, you know, uh, with some customers, we see up to 70% of the data. You're just not tracking it. So is that a bigger issue for businesses in the EU because of the cookie banner? Uh, well, I, I think it's for everybody really? globally. Um, and the problem is there was no like uh, discontinuity or big event happening so that you can pinpoint that this is where it started happening. It was something getting worse and worse every day for the last 10 years. So it's nobody's fault. It's just a trend and you need to accept it. What you can do about it is uh, uh, knowing that this problem exists and you can do something about it and fix it. So that's the problem we're trying to solve at Edgy. So we allow companies to collect 100% of the um, web analytics data so they can make the best decisions. Wow, that's a big claim, 100%. So does it, how does it do that? Does it run something in the browser? I guess not, right? Because that's on the, the customer's side. So right. Can you tell us a little bit about how it does that behind so the scenes? So I mentioned the biggest cause, technically, is that 99% of uh, web analytics relies on client-side SDKs, mm -hmm. which is JavaScript <coughs> scripts running in the browser. And whether you're doing you know, an e-commerce or a media website or a blog or whatever you do on your website, you cannot control what actually happens on the browser because people have ad blockers, because they don't want to see ads, but these ad blockers also tend to block you know, analytics calls, and even first party ones often. Um, and so that is the biggest cause for this huge data loss globally in almost every website. And so what you can do is, and that's, how we are trying to solve the problem is to shift that computation from the client to the edge. So a lot of people, for example, use server-side tagging, which is an alternative solution where you have some kind of proxy or another server that takes care of the tracking. But that is also easily blockable and you have control of it. It's not transparent, it's not open source technology that you can customize. And so with Edgy, we act as a proxy in front of the customer website. And because we act as a proxy, we can uh, directly take care of sending the data to the analytics tool that the customer is already using, whether it is you know, Google Analytics or Amplitude or Segment and so on. And this is only for, it is not only for analytics. It could be for your cloud database or data warehousing APIs. Um, it could be for um, consent management platforms. It could be for you know, all sorts of data that you need to send somewhere from the browser. So does that mean that the, the person browsing, the customer's customer, will hit uh, Edgy's proxy before the web page loads in their browser? Exactly, so we can take care of tracking that page view, for example, even before the page is sent back to the browser. Right. Now, it's important that you take care of a few technical challenges, you know, bot detection, uh, GDPR compliance or yeah. any privacy regulation kind of compliance globally uh, and, and of course we do that as well. So what you can do if 
you want, for example, to understand how people use your product, you want to track page views, you want to track custom clicks or client-side interactions, and those can still be tracked thanks to the Edgy SDK. So there is an SDK, but you can get rid of the five, 10, or 15 SDKs that you have today. You replace all of those with the Edgy SDK, and that takes care of talking to the Edgy proxy that does the actual data delivery to the tool that you're already using today. So it's funny because uh, some people look at Edgy and they say, oh, so you are a data analytics platform and you are competing with uh, the Google or the Amplitude. It's, it's not true. Mm -hmm. We are actually helping you make the most out of those platforms that you're already using today. Yeah. So you're not quite a data analytics platform. You're not quite a CDN either. You're the piece in between that allows you to collect the correct data for your customers. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you have, I assume, some sort of um, pricing model. And I, I hear that you're using Stripe for that. Can you tell us a bit about what you've implemented? Absolutely. So we have, uh, we are a, you know, a small startup with a non-typical software as a service model. That's how I like to call it. Because you know, it's not a simple you know, monthly fee. That is the, 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 you know, the, the first step for many startups. <laughs> we actually have a, a, flat, a flat rate monthly, but also a consumption-based model. Mm. So if you are a, an edgy customer, you use edgy. And every month, like in the cloud, uh, you pay for the consumption of that month, right? And so um, that is a bit more complicated. There is a bit of metering involved, and you know you need to be very granular and very pre precise. And we have two different dimensions on, on which we do the metering as well. So uh, I like to say that I used to use Stripe back in 2014, so more than 10 years ago. And back then, it was a simple checkout experience for us in my first startup, and I loved it. So last year, when it came to you know starting integrating payments into Edgy, I immediately thought about Stripe, and I was really pleasantly surprised to see that almost all, without the almost all the, the the pricing models you can think about are natively supported. And so there was a great, not a surprise, we kind of expected it, but we were really excited to start and move quick, right? As a startup, it's, impo it's super important to have speed and flexibility, and because it's payment, their resilience uh, as well. It's actually really cool to hear a usage-based billing UK that is not Gen AI, especially from a, a startup, right? Because uh, I know that's that's definitely a, a, a vertical that is using the usage-based billing um, uh, offering a lot. But so it's nice to hear like a, <laughs> there's alternate use cases out there. Okay, so you meant you mentioned before that you have to set up meters, like you have to have some number of things that you're going to track for what you're going to bill for. Uh, what meters have you set up and how did you decide what to measure? So we have two different dimensions uh, to measure. One is the number of requests that go through the Edgy proxy. And uh, that's similar to how you would think of a CDN, for example, right? Because we do run on top of existing CDN providers like Fastly and Cloudflare and so on. Um, and in addition to that, the major dimension is the number of data events mm. that we do deliver to the final uh, analytics destination. And there will be more in the future as, as we expand the number of features and integrations. Um, so we do set up two different meters, uh, meters on metering on, stri on Stripe. And it would be simple uh, if we could just send all the raw events to Stripe, and Stripe allows it. And that's amazing. But because of the globally distributed nature of Edgy and because of the scale as well, because there are some soft limits and some hard limits that uh, you need to be aware of, you know, we decided to do a little bit of aggregation uh, on our side as well. Um, I think the soft limit is like a thousand requests, a thousand metering events per second. Uh, and then there is another at 10,000. I think you can go up to a hundred thousand today. Mm. Um, I think we are not there at 100,000, but because we run on top of CDNs, we have over 100 pops where our, our application is running and each pop is you know, generating events, both requests and events. So it will be already um, tricky enough to do all that distributed metering and Stripe would allow it, but um, it's also super important for us to keep the performance as optimal as possible because of the proxy is on the critical re request response path of our customer website. We don't want to introduce latency uh, you know, 
And so what we already were doing was sending the data to a Google BigQuery table for the raw uh, proxy requests. And so that's where our uh, ground truth or our uh, raw data lives. Mm -hmm. And so we are also adding all of the other dimension, the events into that uh, table. And that's where we do a lot of the aggregation. So today we're like two or three terabytes of data already and we are growing you know 10x or 100x in the, in the next six 12 months so we want to make sure that the solution is ready uh, to scale do you have any challenges with that distributed architecture of making sure your system is eventually consistent that that is one of the issues because um we already manage over six billion requests a wow. month and so that's you know even for a startup it's already you know, a pretty pretty large number of requests and stripe does allow us to use uh, item potency keys for example and to handle that uh, that uh, technical challenge mm. um, because we decided to do some pre-aggregation that's not a huge issue um, because if you do hourly aggregation like we do for example the timestamp is unique by default, right? So we take care of doing, you know, hourly processing. And once we do that, we can say Stripe, here is the meters for the last hour, here is the timestamp, and Stripe takes care of making that unique. So even if we run it again, uh, you know, it's, it's going to override the previous data, but mm. you know, that, that's pretty cool for us. It, it already comes with some item potency and resiliency and cohere data consistency for us. That's great. So that's how you, uh, you sort of send data to the meter. How do you then manage the billing um, of your customers? Right, so because it's um, volume based and, right. you end at the end, and you pay at the end of, of the billing cycle, what happens is that there is a flat uh, amount that you pay as soon as you subscribe. If it's you know, the 10th of the month or the, the second of the month, you immediately pay the, the monthly fee. And then at the end of the billing cycle, they get charged for the volume, right? Um, I think that's great. We are looking for ways to kind of simplify even more that experience. For example, some customers want to pay everything at the end of the billing cycle, not something at the beginning and something at the end. We are looking for ways and maybe you guys can help. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there is a lot of flexibility there. But in the first implementation that we have, um, we handle those two things uh, a bit differently. Um, but the big reason why we started doing that pre-aggregation is that we were already building some kind of you know statistics and dashboard for the final customer because they want to see what's going on every day or every hour so we thought well we can reuse that system um and it was pretty easy like the stripe api as you know is super friendly and uh, what we did there is to add a little bit of resiliency on our side to make sure you know if the infrastructure or the, or the cron job goes down you know we can rerun it so everything is important everything is um, resilient to infrastructure failure or API failures or you know if I think is wrong we can retry without issues and that's super important because we want accurate invoices and accurate metering for our customers. Do customers ask you of a way of making sure their spend is like predictable or doesn't go over certain limits? Um, we don't have that today. Um, eventually that's going to be interesting for us mm. to look at like, guardrails or alarms or implementing mechanisms like that. One, one mechanism that you could look at is credits, right? Where you allow customers to buy credits and to top that up as well. So that's, they sort of nice. more in control of, of their own spend. I know that's something that uh, some startups do. What were some of the other challenges that you had when you were like specifically around the Stripe integration? Like what was difficult? Um, so I, something that we loved was the idea of evolving the integration over time. So we knew that the metering itself was a bit more complex, for example, than the front end integration. So we went super easy on the front end integration. We actually used the, the managed billing portal mm -hmm. there just to keep it as simple as possible. And we love that it's just a button on the website and our customers just have everything built in, you know, the credit card information, the invoice history, and all the data they need to double check when they need it. So on the front end side, it's a couple of routes and a simple button. Um, we tried to invest most of the integration time on the API side, where we have like a one-time setup for each tenant, because all the whole architecture, of course, is multi-tenant. And then we have some um, customer-specific 
um, customizations, like we have private pricing for some customers, we have coupons, we have discounts, we have uh, free trials, and so we, we kind of handle all of that, all of those edge cases, no pun intended. <laughs> and then... Uh, I bet you use that joke a lot. <laughs> uh, I try not to, I yeah. try not to. Um, and then really we try to focus, focus most of the time on the metering because that was essential, right? If the number don't sum up, if something's wrong and not accurate, that, that's a huge issue mm. uh, to our customer trust and to make it as transparent as possible. And we also love the fact that, first of all, the Stripe API does all the math. It's not complex, it's not, it's not rocket science, right? But the model that we are using, the pricing model we are using, is not only volume-based, but it's graduated. Mm. So that means that you have to sum up all the tiers in your, in your you know, from zero to one million, right. it's a cost, from one million to five million, it's another unit cost. And you can set that within Stripe itself, You can set, you? exactly. Yeah. And so not only we can customize it customer by customer, but uh, Stripe takes care of all the math. Just, you can just set it and you, let it work. Exactly. Yeah. You set it once or customize it once for the specific tenant, and then Stripe does all the math for us, which is not, again, it, it's not rocket science, but it's useful and you can easily customize mm. it on a per customer level if you want with all the coupons, with all the you know, edge cases built in. Um, and then, yeah, that, that, that's most of the integration really. I like the, that example because we're both from a kind of serverless background, right, at AWS, yes. where they would handle the, the compute, the undifferentiated scaling and, and performance. And I always think of Stripe as doing a similar thing, but with the, the movement of, of money, right, and, and how that scales. And it, it, there's, there's so many parallels in it, right? Um, so what is one piece of advice that you would give to another startup that wants to integrate usage-based billing? Like, what would you tell them before they set out? Well, the, the high-level tip is, you know, com coming from the ser serviceful mm. world is, you know, use Stripe as a service, uh, you know, and if you're already building your application, you know, with the serviceful mindset, you know, it's just not too hard, really. Um, but with a volume, and consumption-based model specifically. Um, I think it's hard for a startup to estimate your, your scale and you know, how many events or units of events you're going to have in three, six, or 12 months. So maybe we went a bit overkill and thought, okay, if we do 100X in the next six months, you know, some of these limits we're gonna hit. And so we added maybe a bit of early complexity, but we haven't regretted it yet. Mm. So my suggestion, depending on the scale, because you know, you could have volume based uh, model, but each dimension is, you know, from one to, from zero to 10, and then mm. from 10 to 50, and that would be great, but we have from zero to a million or, or billion, we have customers doing billions of requests or events every month. And so if the, if the numbers are so high and the number of unique um, matter events that you need to send to Stripe is so high, you know, you do need to think about... You need some cues in there. Yes, you need cues, <laughs> yeah. you need reliability, you need to make sure, because that becomes a critical part of the system, right? We were initially building this part of the system as a, yeah, some of these numbers will show up in a customer dashboard. Mm. That's not a critical part. It's important, but it's not critical while the events that you send to Stripe end up in an invoice. And that, you know, that's legally and financially important. Uh, you can't mess it up. And so um, we haven't regretted investing a bit more time on that part. Um, you may not have that complexity in the average case. So think about that, but not too much. Okay, yeah, that's great advice. And I know that you're giving a talk tonight at our London meetup, so I'll be sure to put that in the video description. I, I s assume that will be uh, based around what Edgy do and how you integrated the, the usage-based billing model. Absolutely, yeah. and we go a bit deeper into how the proxy works and where are the events actually being triggered and why is, that, is there a bit of architectural complexity and where do we send the data and how we do the hourly aggregation. So a, a bit deeper into the technical details, but yes. Great, looking forward to it. So in the meantime, where can people go to find out more about Edgy? Uh, so check out www.edgy.cloud uh, or just connect via LinkedIn. Uh, I'm Alex Casaldoni, uh, happy to talk. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for coming in.